Hi guys! For today's topic, we're going to have the measures of central tendency. Measures of central tendency is defined as the center of the concentration of scores. It is also the single number which describes the, the totality of the set of data collected. We have three measures of central tendency which is or which are the mean, median, and mode. Mean, or average, is the most popular and well-known measure of central tendency. It is computed by summing all the values of the variable in the data set give, divided by the number of observations or data entry. It is denoted by mu and x bar. Well, the second measure of central tendency we have is the median. Median is the middle score for a set of data arranged in ascending or descending order of magnitude. It is denoted by MD. And lastly, we have the mode. Mode is the most frequently occurring score in the data set. It is denoted by MO. And we have types of mode. We have the no mode, meaning there is no repeating data entry. Unimodal, a data which has one mode. Bimodal, a data having two modes. And multimodal, a data having three or more modes. Okay, let's now discuss the measures of central tendency for ungrouped data. Let's start with the mean. The formula for the mean is... Uh, x bar which is equal to the summation of x sub i all over n where x bar is the sample mean x sub i is the ith observed value in the sample summation of course sum of all values and n is the total number of data entry so I you have a few examples that we can apply or where we can apply this formula for the mean example the items listed below represent the scores of seven BS applied statistics students during the final examination. Compute for the mean score. So the data are 89, 75, 90, 85, 78, 87, and 80. And we are asked to compute for the mean score. So by using this formula, so we're going to add all the data entry divided by the number of data entry so uh, we have seven so by summing up yun nasa numerator natin we're going to get 584 and then divided by seven so again y7 it is the number of data entry so we have one two three four five six and seven and if you're going to divide divide 584 by seven Rounding it up to the nearest hundreds, so you're going to get 83.43. So, we can therefore conclude that 83.43 is the mean score of the 7 apply, BS applied statistics students on their final examination. Another example for the mean. Suppose BS Applied Math Program has 10 students and the height in centimeters are as follows. So we have 170, 165, 155, 160, 150, 149, 152, 161, 163, and 175. We are asked to find for the mean height of the students. And again, by using this formula. So... By um, adding up all the data entry, and since we have uh, 10 uh, students, so divided by 10, so 1,600, if you're going to sum up the value in our numerator, so that will be equal to 1,600, and then divided by 10, so that will be equal to 160 centimeters. So, the mean height of the students of the VS Applied Math program students is 160 centimeters. Okay, let's now proceed with the median. So, we have two formulas for the mid, to compute for the median. First, 
uh, formula if the n is odd. So, yung n natin is yung total number of data entries. So, if it is odd, the formula for median would be x sub n plus 1 all over 2. While, if the total number of data entry is even, so the formula for median will be x sub n over 2 plus x sub n over 2 plus 1 all over 2. And then again, let's apply this formula on the examples given. First example, the items listed below represent the scores of 7 graduate students during final examination. Compute the median score. So, the first step in computing for the median is to arrange the data in either ascending or descending order. And as we arrange uh, the data, we must put a label as x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3 until we get to the last. So, in this case, we have x sub 7. And we arrange the data in ascending order. And then after that, we are to determine um, what formula are we going to use. So, since n is 7, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 data entry. So, uh, n is equal to 7, and 7 is an odd number, so we are going to use this formula. So, again, ang value ng n natin ay 7, and by substituting 7 dito sa uh, formula natin, we're going to have x sub 7 plus 1 over 2, so that will be x sub 8 over 2, and 8 over 2 is equal to x sub 4. And then, you're going to look at the ascending order of data and find what is the value of x sub 4. So, x sub 4 is equal to 85. So, meaning to say, um, the median score of uh, the given problem is 85. So, if you will notice, kahit naman hindi natin gamitin yung formula, pwede natin makuha yung median. So, um, ilatag lang natin itong score ng isang straight line. So, kung ano yung pinaka-middle score, yun yung median. And yes, tama naman yun. It's um, the simplest way to get the median. But, um, this is how we compute for it mathematically. Next example, suppose MA math program has 10 graduate students and the height in centimeters are as follows. We are to find for the median height of the graduate students. So again, arrange the data in either ascending or descending order. And then, let's put a label starting from x sub 1 hanggang kung saan yung abutin. So in this case, we, we had x sub 10. And then identify n. So, ilan yung data entry natin? So, we have 10 as the data entry and 10 is an even number. So, we are going to use this formula. So, by substituting 10 sa n natin, so that will be x sub 10 over 2 plus x sub 10 over 2 plus 1 all over 2. And by simplifying it, 10 over 2 is equal to 5, and 10 over 2, which is equal to 5 plus 1, so that will be x sub 5 plus x sub 6 all over 2. And then after this, we're going to look at our data set. What is the value of x sub 5? So 160, and the value of x sub 6 is 161. So we're going to substitute x sub 5 and x sub 6 here. So that's why we're going to have... 160 plus 161 all over 2, which will be equal to 321 all over 2, which is equal to 160.5. So, 160.5 is the median centimeters, is the median height of the graduate students. And lastly, we have the mode. So, dito sa mode, we're going to identify what is the mode and the type of mode. So, consider the data set 1, 2, 2, 2, 8, 1, 4, and 10. So, 2 is the most frequently occurring number and since isa lang, so that is considered the 
mode and since isa lang yung mode natin, so that's why we can say that it is unimodal. Next example, suppose BS Applied Statistics has 10 students and their height are as follows. So as you can see, all the data here appeared only once. Therefore, there is no mode. Third example, the data given below is the number of candies 11 children bought from a candy store. So we have 4, 3, 4, 8, 2, 1, 10, 5, 4, 8, and 8. So the most frequently occurring data is 4 and 8, which appeared, which both appeared thrice. And since we have two modes, which are 4 and 8, so this is considered as bimodal. And lastly, suppose there are 15 members in a small organization and listed below are the number of tasks each has accomplished in a week. So we have 1, 3, 5, 3, 4, 2, 1, 5, 6, 7, 10, 8, 2, 9, and 7. So as you can see, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7 appeared uh, twice. And so, yun yung ano natin, um, most frequent occurring number. So, itong 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7. So, that's why these numbers are considered the mode. So, since there are 5 modes, so this is considered as multimodal. And that's it for the measures of central tendency for ungrouped data. Thank you guys for listening and we hope that you will learn.